Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog. We got another box and I'm going to say that I really do like the idea that these things are coming in boxes these days. A lot of the time, just like everything's coming in boxes. Um, because it keeps things safer. And uh, and I, I just prefer that. I prefer that things can't just get rammed into the letterbox. Because that's when, you know, I've got no idea where the opening bit is for this. Let's get this out. Okay, here. Yeah, you were in. There we go. <clears throat> so this time, yes, there's a kit. It's uh, nicely in there. And uh, it's a it's a another it's a preamp foil. Let's see if we can get this off. Just I'm not sure why they put so much you know cling film around this, uh, but there we go. It's better to be safe, maybe. I'm sorry. Maybe I can get this off with. I was going to say with minimal fuss, but it looks like it's not going to be as easy as that. So let's just uh, let me just start this off a little bit down here. There we go. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah. So maybe uh, the good people over there. Maybe you don't need to use so much cling film, especially when it's just going around the board. I mean, the board in the box. Would have been pretty secure anyway. Um, but that is, you know, I know I haven't done that the best way, but there you go. Okay, so what we got here then? So we've got our AC side here with our caps, and we got a. Um, Uh, LM7812, so there'll be an LM7912 there, for our plus minus 12 volts going through here. And uh, one of the nice things about this op amp, let's say uh, 5532, JR, Japan Radio Company, JRC, that's it, yeah. Um, and the nice thing about it, or one of the nice things about this, uh, particular kit is it has actually given some suggestions on different op amps that you can use. Now I know that with the JR C5532 there are quite a few op amps you can swap those out with. And uh, look, at, look at these the caps got there. I do like them when they feel quite heavy. The caps. Um, it says Nichicon. You can see that. Well, there we go. Bit of Nichicon. And uh, yeah, but I do like it when they. Uh, oh, we got a socket as well for the op amp. Nice and maybe. If, you know, they've done a little bit more protection on the component bag, even though, to be honest with you, it doesn't really need it. It's in the. Um, that's the that's the op amp that comes with the JRC fifty five thirty two, a very well known op amp there. I do like that you get these uh, connectors and you get the uh, little rubber. I'm not going to bother taking all these out. The little rubber things, but that you get the the old um, spade connector uh, and you have the other part of the. It goes on the board in there as well. Yeah, there is. There's one. There's another one. And I do like that. I do like that they are putting all these bits in because it just makes it look like a more finished. Um, um, you know, kit. So let's have a look at the at the screen then. 
and we can see what we got here. Now this is the DIY C3810M stereo preamplifier kit based on AccuPhase preamp circuit B6-26. Well, you can buy it as a kit or you can buy it as a finished board. The board does look quite nice because uh, we've got the kit here but down here there's a lot of uh, well there's only four on here and they all give five stars arrive quickly finish board finish board none of them say anything else about it so, but never mind but this is one of the things i like it's the working voltage ac 12 volt um 12 volt because i got that 12 to 15 volt is okay and it says here but I can also upgrade with your favourite dual op amp to try a different sound style such as OPA2604, AD8287, ME4972 and if I remember rightly this uh, 4972, these, um, the actual distortion levels on them, if I remember rightly, it's there. there it is. The distortion level, so here applications, ultra high quality audio amplif amplification, high fidelity preamplifiers, high fidelity multimeter. And um, when we look at the distortion, look at this one. Um, well, there's the uh, linear gain. So uh, with a vanishingly low THD and noise, 0 0.00003%. Do you know, that's just non-existent really, isn't it? It's, um, I don't even have anything that would register that, um, especially my ears, I'm not gonna register that. So yeah, you know, you, you, you're gonna be able to change out the flavors quite nicely with this. And all of those are pumps that I have, you know, I showed a couple of videos ago. Uh, you know, I got a, half a dozen, maybe a couple more. Of these uh, op amps, all of those will work uh, on this, so it's going to be interesting for me. It's no good for me to sit and play a bit and have it be compressed via YouTube and all this sort of stuff, and then you to have it come out of whatever side of things you've got going on there. And try and tell you, hey, this sounds great, you know, I really like the sound of this, I prefer this op amp sound over this. Um, because it's not um, it's not something that you can transfer that easy because it's all about personal preference. But that's the great thing about getting a board like this because you can you can create your own personal preference in a way. You can swap the op amp out and think, oh, maybe the JR fifty five thirty two is a little bit bright for me, or um, and you like the idea of sticking one of the Muse. Uh, Muse 1 in or Muse 2, which are Jap Japan's you know, really, really fine up amps there. I wonder why the Muse 3 is not there. Maybe it's a different configuration, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so the nice thing about it then is that you can then change those out. I'm just looking for ceramics. I don't like ceramics. Not for the audio side of things. I, you know, I watch quite a few videos about these things, and most of them say, you yeah, know, ceramics is because they turn into little microphones. They can make noise from themselves, and, and so they're not such a good thing. It's, um, but yeah, so okay, so that's the kit. That's what we got, and that's what we're going to build up, and we'll give it a little test and see what it's like. Okay, so we got this far. So far, so good. Now, can you see those transistors there? 2SA, what's it, 570? Is that what it says? And you got the 2SC 2240s. Now, both those transistors are Toshiba, Japanese, the same as AccuPhase. Uh, those products were built in Japan, not China. And these transistors that are not the same as the transistors on the board. Let's see if we can. I have to zoom in on that actually to get it better. So we'll look. There we go. See those? These transistors 
if not those ones, these ones most definitely. It's just, uh, there we go. These are actually made, uh, we got the Fi Hong, and Fi Hong, it's Chinese Electronic Welfare UV, it's, it's China. It's a, it's a big place in China. Um, not, not Chinese martial arts, but it's, it's basically a, a Chinese company, not Japanese company. So I'm a bit reluctant to stick in Chinese. I mean, for all I know, they could be an upgrade, but this is Akiface is a Japanese offering. Toshiba is a Japanese offering. And um, those transistors are Chinese. I ain't got anything against them. I just think uh, if you're going to buy with Chinese, uh, buy Japanese, you know, even the JRC, Japanese radio company, it's Japan. And I think swapping them out with Chinese stuff is a little bit of a... Uh, it's not an insult, it's just... Uh, yeah. Okay, everybody. So I've got this built up now. Looks nice enough. Um, quite a nice little layout, actually. It's, the underneath is, as you can see, and cleaned off and and done. Now, the only thing I had to do was uh, I put him on those transistors wrong. Let's take it out and top it out. Um, can be a bit of a pain in the backside, but you know sometimes it can be easier than others. So what I'm going to do now is I've done an intermodulation and distortion, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly reset this up because I just want to show you the underside of it, and um, we'll get on with doing the rest of the. Uh, Measurements, yeah. even though some have been done already, this is just to speed up the video, otherwise, you know, these things get into dragging on. So, this is the ground going in, this is the signal going in, and we're using the um, analog discovery open ended connection, doesn't need the doesn't need to be set up like that. Anything else for this, we don't need any. Um, Attenuation or anything because we're just you know, we're just measuring this and uh, Yeah, so it's a different setup. I have to set up differently. I've made up some cables and stuff for um, Doing other measurements, but just for now we'll I'll show you the intermodulation distortion in a minute and then just for now we're just gonna be set up like this for this. It's using the JRC to be honest with it, we, uh, I don't know if it's a genuine JRC. You can't tell these days, can you? Uh, 5522 uh, or whatever it is. I can't remember, 32. Um, but you can use different if you decide to connect this one up. You know, if you got this and you connect it up and you got different op amps, you can swap them out. And it will, you know, it'll, uh, the different op amps sound slightly different. So... Uh, it's going to be for what you like. There's no tone controls or anything with this, no volume control. You'll you'll be doing all that from your music player um, or whatever input you've got for it. Uh, right, let's just power that on again. Boom, boom. Nothing looks like it's doing anything it shouldn't be. So let's take a peek at the screen here. Now I've already done some of this, and as you can see here, look. I'll run this across here and uh, we can look, uh, we're on 0 0.5 anyway, from this is 20 hertz, 0 0.06, so 0 0.064, 0 0.055, we've got some little peaks here, but this noise, it's different, now this has been measured from my laptop, I interchange a little bit sometimes between the big computer underneath the desk, uh, my laptop, um, just because I'm always trying to find out what cables make a difference, what USB sockets make a difference, and there, there, there are differences. Um, what machine makes a difference? But it's so 
the, the differences are so small and there's so many variables, you know, changes like if I change the, the, the power going in when I make the measurement um, or against the cable I'm using or the machine or the USB socket on the machine. And if you've got half a dozen cables and you sometimes test at different voltages just to have a look for noise floors going up and down and stuff like this. Uh, and then you try in different USB sockets as well with the different cables, with the different voltages. So I've got to the stage where it's today I'm just like, no, that's it, just do it. You know, this is as quiet as I can get really um, within my environment. And it's not particularly too bad. Zero, uh, 0.07 there, 0.08 there goes up a little bit here. Where's the peak part? We've got a little peak area here. Where would you reckon about here? 0.084. 0.080s, you know, 0.7, point blah, blah. And we get down there. But that's the total harmonic distortion of the noise. So if we filter out the noise, we get this for our total harmonic distortion. And if we go back to that, uh, that's 20 hertz, 20.7. 0 0.04, 0 0.044, 0 0.044, 0 0.045, 0 0.045. 0 0.045, it's all 0 0.04s and 0 0.046, and you've got a few little bits down here, and this goes all out, it's 25 kilohertz there, 0 0.036. So that's not bad at all. Uh, we can look at the second harmonic there, you can take a peek for yourself, it's a little bit lower. Dead, again, same sort of thing. So, uh, uh, but let's have a look at our frequency response. Now I've already done this just to save time. And as you can see here, this is uh, way past here. This is 10 hertz. Uh, so we've got a 0 0.18 dBr drop against the reference voltage going in. Uh, quite a high gain though, when you look at the gain up here. Um, I don't know why they're making these with such high gains on the preamplification but anyway it doesn't matter uh, so here we are at 20 hertz 19.9 we've got 0 0.06 dbr so the 0 0.06 dbr drop off is hardly anything i mean it is a small amount but it's hardly anything you've still got like 90 percent power there on over um so it's, you know it's hardly anything rolling off there at all uh, 0 0.03, so we're going across and it pretty much holds all the way until we get to this little bit here, which could be a bit of noise induction from this out from there, but it seems to get this on quite a few. Not all though, that's that's the thing. Not all will show this like this. Um, but we got a on the top peaky part 0.12. 0.11 and so nothing really you know just that little bit of added you see up there like you know, 15 uh, 0 0.6 dB on there and 14.93 uh, let's say on here where it says uh, 0, 0.00 dBr up the top so nothing really and the modulation let's just uh, I should have done this, and I? Oh, we opened up in a different place. So pictures, let's bring that across here. So this is the intermodulation distortion. So we're running two signals in. We've got a 19 kilohertz uh, signal and a 20 kilohertz signal side by side. And as you can see here, this is zero hertz down here. Uh, and as you can see here, all the way across this side, and I think there's this little bit here, but that's like, you know, it's uh, sort of 67 sort of dB down. It's not live, so I can't actually, I should have probably left this little marker on there. But it makes no difference. Um, that's pretty clean. Sometimes you see all sorts of uh, in between and around the outsides, and uh, but this is, uh, you know, yeah, pretty clean. So we can get rid of that. So that's the intermodulation distortion. Uh, now we're going to take a peek at the uh, at the scope. Uh, so it's already set here, 20 kilohertz. We'll do this as we're doing. Um, so 20 kilohertz looks pretty good. I'm just going to knock that up to 100 kilohertz, which is, you know, there, there's no sort of energy power for sound 
spare really that we're going to be hearing but we'll do a single hit on it anyway and you know this is uh going up this could be you know down to the speed of the system i'm using it's but that's still pretty darn good and if we just went to 20 kilohertz that is more likely for us uh, yeah, we got square wave which is pretty good i'm just going to drop that all the way down to 20 hertz now and take a peek at this not bad at all it's doing a lot worse so these go down here at 20 hertz <laughs> on the line down this way so you know that's not bad at all if i just check a little peek at my uh, floor standing speakers what they can do yeah you know you're not going to be getting really hardy anything um change on that there we go for 50 um yeah that's pretty well it's all going to be pretty good really so let's go have a look at 100 now 100 hertz yep i mean you can see when you look at one end to the other uh what that's going to be like but this hmm you see this it doesn't tell you you know the sound quality side a lot of that's subjective again this is why i don't bother doing the music but i've been asked a few times why don't i bother you know playing some audio well because because one the way i hear it and the and what it's like for me as a as a uh, quality experience is going to be different to the way you do i mean we're all going to probably agree that loaded distortion isn't very nice unless you're really into distortion and you might think that's really nice right so i don't play the music because it's not worth it's just not worth the effort it's one of these if it shows up anything dodgy in these outputs then hey there's probably no point getting it the rest of it's going to be down to you but the nice thing about this let me take a peek at this again is the nice thing about this is because it's got the op amp in here um it's got the op amp you can swap that out so if this i know that these grc jrc 5532s are quite bright or in my ears they sound quite bright but i know if i put a uh i was going to say bill burr then it's not that is it? it's burr brown um I've been mean, one of the ones I've got, and I can't exactly remember off the top of my head exactly what it is. But if I put that in, I know that I've done that before with the little NAD one, which is you can swap the up amps out on, and it sounded a bit more you know, not as bright. Now, some people might like more bright, some people might think being bright is too bright, and they might want it not dulled as such, but just not as bright. That's what the that's what the Burr Brown does for me. On one of the up amps I got is it it just it doesn't dull it it's just not as bright so this is what I'm saying it's all very very subjective it's all what is what you like I mean don't get me wrong at one stage I thought one of the Burr Browns that I got was a fake and because I thought it was a fake I didn't like it but then when I did the checks and everything and it came back it was okay that it was a genuine I liked it more that's what I mean by being subjective <laughs> then that's why I don't bother putting audio things up because by the time I've recorded it through whatever it is I'm recording it through and whatever failings it's got and then it goes through the YouTube compression and then it comes out of whatever it is you're using yeah it's not really what it started off with originally anyway not you know um uh verbatim tonally and everything else like that it makes changes so but what I can say to you is this little kit here Seems to be pretty good across the range. Low frequency, all the way past what we need necessarily for the high frequency. It's pretty darn good. It looks nice, easy enough to build. You only need a 12, 012 for the AC input. And uh, yeah, it's a, it seems like it's going to be a, a pretty good. Pretty good. And because you can change out the op amps, um, that's, a, that's a good little thing as well. But then you might think, well, I prefer to have the NAD one because the NAD one's got tone controls and volume control. Yes, you're absolutely right. That can work well for you as well, especially if you've got a fixed output on whatever you're playing, 
pushing into it and you want to be able to moderate the volume and maybe adjust the, the tone a little bit. But there you go. I don't, I don't do that part. I just do this part. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one, guys.